The task required a practiced hand and a bit of elbow grease, or rather, nose grease. Turnbull demonstrates over Zoom, raising the closed tweezers to the outside of her nose to pick up a bit of oil, which prevents the grains from zinging across the room when plucked. What they found surprised them. Concealed beneath the eastern side of New Zealand's South and Stewart Islands lingers a chunk of a billion-year-old supercontinent. The discovery suggests Zealandia may not be as young as they once thought, which may bolster the case for its continental status. This newfound fragment of ancient rock may be part of the missing piece for Zealandia. The discovery ticks the final box, Turnbull says. We are sitting on a continent. That layer on top of the earth that we call the crust, that thin layer is where all the action for life happens, he says. The continental crust is where we live, grow crops, draw water, mine minerals, and more. Essentially, all of our life is built on crust. Scientists have been on Zealandia's trail for decades, but actually defining it as a continent has proven tricky. The dirty secret of geology is that there's no real hard and fast definition of a continent, Schwartz says. One major component is the composition of the rocks. The seafloor around New Zealand isn't made of the magnesium and iron-packed rocks that compose most oceanic crust. Instead, the rocks are types rich in silica, such as granite, that are more commonly found in continental crust. The rocks span a huge area that's also significantly thicker and elevated compared to the more typical oceanic crust surrounding it. That's weird, Klepe says. Continental crust is more buoyant than its oceanic counterparts, so it tends to resist the processes that recycle surface rocks back into the mantle. The stable cratonic nucleus of these rocks provides a foundation from which continents can grow over time, as the slow march of plate tectonics sends island arcs and other landmasses piling up along their edges. The new study zeroes in on 169 samples from New Zealand's South and Stewart Islands. Some Turnbull and her team had collected during multiple trips to the region, and others that came from the nation's rock catalogue, so that the collection sites speckle the pair of southern islands in their entirety. Back in the lab, they crushed the rocks and sorted the grains by density and magnetics until all that remained was fine sand of mostly zircon crystals. Turnbull then picked out thousands of zircons, transferring them to microscope slides, which were later smothered in epoxy and polished before chemical analysis could finally start. It's a full-on process, Turnbull says. As the data rolled in, an unexpected story emerged. The researchers used a method in which they modeled the age of not just the zircons, but also the parent rock that melted to form them. The ages they recorded revealed that a swath of zircons along the eastern edge of the two southern islands hailed from subsurface rocks that dated as far back as 1.3 billion years ago. At that time, all the world's landmasses were headed toward a slow-motion collision that would ultimately form the supercontinent named Rodinia. This global smash-up and later split likely generated pockets of magma that would become the slab of very ancient rock that now lurks deep beneath New Zealand, the team suggests a cratonic fragment upon which Zealandia later built. The zircons also seem to bear marks from the eventual separation of infant Zealandia from its parent supercontinent. The crystals themselves, and the rocks that encase them, wouldn't form until 500 to 100 million years ago, when fiery outbursts of volcanism partially melted these chunks of hidden Rodinian crust. The blobs of magma rose upward slowly, crystallizing into granite studded with zircon. Tectonics shifts eventually brought these tiny time capsules to the surface, where Turnbull and her team serendipitously collected them. This is a classic thing with science, Turnbull says. The things that we discovered are things that we weren't necessarily setting out to discover. Perhaps Zealandia is just a young continent. You're seeing the process of continent creation around the central, Rodinian, fragment, he says. Turnbull agrees, adding, it's like the birth of a kraton. It would be awesome if we did actually find that true evidence, he says. Still, the work promises to help scientists better understand the dance of Earth's continents as they've waltzed across the planet, periodically combining into supercontinents and then tearing back apart. And there's plenty more to find within Zealandia's bounds, Turnbull adds. It just makes you keen to keep getting out there and exploring.